When I think of modern knitting, something that comes to mind besides like maybe being a little bit oversized or positive ease is maybe a little bit thicker or bulkier yarns. When I look through my vintage knitting patterns, I see from about the 1960s onwards, there are booklets dedicated to super bulky knits, like easy, fast, bulky knits. But it's not something that comes to mind for the 1930s. So when we found this pattern for a 1930s sweater made from super bulky yarn, I knew I had to try it out as well. Quite a while ago now, I sent Claude of Retro Claude a set of knitting patterns from the 1930s because I know the 30s is one of her favorite eras and she knit up this thrifty slip-on which I think is super cute <laughs> even with some of the awkward bits of the design that Claude explains in her video which I will link up above I always I don't know one of these two spots she was kind enough to write out the pattern in modern knitting terms and grade it into four different sizes and make it available for free for everyone on Ravelry so I thought that we could knit that together today and it would be a great one for you to try out as well if you are so inspired to. The yarn that I chose for this particular project is called Rowan Big Wool. I decided to use this one because it was less of a unspun, what do you call that? I can't think of the name, but it actually has some twist and plies to it, which makes me hope that it will last a little bit longer than the roving yarn. That's what the yarn is called. That tends to come in the super bulky size. And I knit up a swatch, which I find is pretty important when basically every stitch counts hugely in such a large size. I am a little over on width, so this is four and a half inches rather than four. I'm gonna be good with that, and I've decided to knit a size small because I have a slightly wider gauge. So I'll start knitting the ribbing, and I'll check in with you again once I finish the ribbing. I have finished the bottom ribbing for the back part of this sweater, and it's time to increase a little bit. This does look super small, but it's ribbing, so it stretches quite a bit, and I am just not used to knitting in super bulky wool. So this just doesn't look familiar to me at all, which is another like really exciting bit of this project is it's so different from what I usually knit. So I will increase for the back torso and knit until we get to the underarm portion where some more patterns and designs will come in. gone up and to the armholes. Can you see that length of fabric? <laughs> and the cast on stitches for where the arms are going to be, or the yoke, I guess is going to be. Technically the yoke is the more proper description of that. And I have a few things that I want to mention. Firstly, I'm so glad I took Claude's advice and I went with circular needles rather than long, flat, straight ones. I feel like trying to carry the bulk of the weight of this project the entire time when you're knitting would get very tiring very quickly. I think I just went with a little bit too long of circular needles because every time I'm knitting it kind of gets tied up and in my way. So maybe don't go for quite this long. I forget exactly how long I went, but it's, it's hard to find <laughs> circular needles in this thickness. So I think I went with whatever I could find. The next thing is these wooden needles, I don't know if you can hear this, make such a lovely sound when I'm knitting. It's so like clickety clackety. It's really soothing and comforting. I absolutely love it. But even with doing circular needles, it is a little tiring on my hands that I'm actually starting to get, what are they called? Twitches, I guess? Almost like twitches, like cramp twitches of my first few fingers. They kind of are cramping together like this. So I might have to put this down for just a little bit to let my hands rest. I mean, I see why this is popular. Like bulky knits are popular for beginners because they go so quickly. It's been maybe an hour, hour and a half and I've gotten so far, but it's really taxing on my hands and sometimes a little frustrating because the wool doesn't behave the way that I'm used to wool behaving. It is a little bit different. So I'm on the fence on whether or not bulky projects are really truly beginner friendly, just because it is extra taxing and tiring and really cumbersome to try to maneuver everything. Anyway, yeah, I'll probably take a rest and then I'll go on. There are a patterned yoke elongated stitches now that I have to do for the next part of the back. <laughs> So the drop stitch pattern is going quite well. I am at the second row of the back and now I should be purling back and dropping the extra wrap, but you can see here that I am 
just at the end of my first ball. And with yarn as bulky as this, I wanna make sure that when I'm changing to a new ball, I don't have a ton of bulk. I have a few ideas how this could be done. I mean, one, I could just literally start the new row with a new ball of yarn and just have two ends to weave in at some point later. You can knot them together in a very certain way, but that also gives some bulk. There's a few things we could do. I think I'm gonna go with like a, it was actually one that Claude mentioned where you untwist a little bit of the old plied yarn and the new plied yarn, you tie them together and you cut off the extra bit of the plies and that's the least bulky join that I can think of. We're already dealing with bulky enough yarn, I don't want there to be like bobbles of bulk somewhere from where we changed balls of yarn. This type of join is called the felted join or the spit splice join because, well, a lot of instructions say to use water, but I did use my spit, so if you want to look up the method to do that, that's what you can search, and here's how the join looked. It wasn't beautiful, I think it's because it was very bulky yarn, but it does end up holding really well in my final sweater, and I have minimal bulk that way. You can see I have knit past the garter stitch portion of the shoulders, and now I am continuing to work the rest of the yoke with the front portion, and the front portion does have three of those elongated stripes, and I just continued working on the sweater exactly as Claude wrote it up, which has been super easy to follow and very clear so far. I am done with the entire body of the sweater, both the back and the front, and I just need to do the sleeves and sew it up now, but I, to be honest, I'm having a little bit of like knitting block because every time I sit down to knit, all I can really see is this background behind me, which is still decorated slash messy from craft mist. So before I continue any other knitting, I think I'm going to make this area tidy so I'll put away my Christmas decorations and I will make it cute and inspirational for me to continue knitting in the new year. A little while later and I have finished both the sleeves so now this piece is not sewn up yet which is why I'm not gonna turn around because the sides are fully open and not sewn up yet um, but I will lay it on the ground so you can kind of see what this piece is supposed to look like right before you sew it up you'll have seen it in Claude's video as well but I love how this yarn feels and it is so unique for a 1930s sweater and it does say to block it before you sew it up but to be honest, I don't know that I can be bothered. <laughs> I'm gonna be 100% honest. So I might not do that. <laughs> I might just go straight to the sewing up. This thrifty slip-on was fully complete. I took a lovely walk in the park and then I took myself out for some tea and scones afterwards and it was absolutely delicious. 
In order to not forget to make this entry into my knitting journal, I made sure to do it right away when I got home using my lovely knitting journal sticker sheets from Engineering Knit. So if you wanna see those or use those yourself, you can find a link to buy them in the description or in the comments down below. Thank you so much for supporting me that way. And I really recommend creating a knitting journal because it has been so much fun to look back at my projects and to have kind of like a multi-dimensional way to keep track of my projects and to look back at them. Not only do I have the name of the yarn, but I put a piece of the yarn in there so that I can go back and really see and feel what that yarn looked like. And maybe for some other people who want to eventually look at my knitting journal, they have a more tangible example of what I worked on. I also add fit notes and things like that, which can be really helpful. And of course I use some more of my sticker sheets to decorate it. And I take a picture with my Instax camera that I got on sale one time, but I really enjoy having an actual photo of my pieces taped in there for me to look back on. Thank you again so much for watching. If you want to get some of these stickers and support me in that way, the link will be in the description once again for my Etsy shop, and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>